Okay, so last time we did the flight, uh, some people mentioned that I might have ducked behind the hill way out there. So on the right hand side, if you can see the yellow school buses, there's a little bit of a ridge there. And I can't rule it out, so I want to do a reflight test on this. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to have the black box record the RC frame rate so we can see what that is. I know like crossfire goes out to 20 millisecond frames. DJI has a pretty competitive frame rate. And I'm feeling that uh, it doesn't go out, the frame rate doesn't drop that low. So let's we'll record that and see what, see what some data shows us on that. All right, without further ado, let's get this done. Okay, John, go ahead, pull out, and I'll pick up. check in uh, so record some frames here just checking my GPS there Let's record some frames from the black box logging we're gonna do a little circle here see what the frame rate looks like With some circles see if it drops all right so in that the goggles went a little red on that so let's Move it along. Only got so much battery, so. Cross over the highway here again. Goggles have a red signal. Now it's okay again. Six satellites. Transmitter's good. Let's get some speed on here. satellites and I'm gonna record some black box again see what our frame rates like cross over the highway here the goggles went red a red on the goggles but the transmitter seems fine black box off again because we only have so much space here all right so the goggles keep going red down to two bars red 37 milliseconds farther than before so those guys were right still see my line of sight let's get some black box some goggles are red oh i'm really losing goggles now really losing goggles there it's real touchy the transmitter is fine the other end. Yep. Goggles are bad. Goggles are bad down to 3.3. Transmitter is solid. So I am way the heck out there guys. I don't even know. Okay I'm, I can see my line of sight right in front of me there. So goggles are down to it was 2.4 Bob, but the transmitter is tight the whole time. No signal loss on the transmitter. Still going out. Still going out. Now the goggles are fine. Jesus. Oh my God. 
All right, um, I'm gonna call it. I mean, now I got red bars on the transmitter and the goggles, but I didn't lose signal at all. So I'm calling it. I am at 3.5 volts per cell. I am concerned I am not gonna make it all the way back at this point. I kinda thought about this before. As long as I can get back, so I've got some good data on the black box out there. As long as I can get, now I'm at 3.3 volts per cell. Not awesome. Oh, 2.3. Uh oh no. Oh no. That is not awesome. 20 minutes later. Oh, look at me go. <laughs> Lost alarm for the rescue. Don't fly without it. So, yeah, successful find. Thank gosh for the lost alarm. Don't leave home without one. Uh, you can see the quad here. Got minor damage, honestly. The lost alarm flew off. I, I just plugged it back in when I found it here and searching around. Other than that, I don't think there's any damage. Other than the battery's probably worse for the wear. So, successful retrieval. V-Fly, lost alarm. Don't fly without one, man. Just don't do it. Okay, well, let's uh, take a look at the black box data. <laughs> See the frame rates and the sacrifices I make for the YouTube channel. Okay, so what we have here is a log of that flight that you just saw. And we have the debug mode set to RC smoothing underscore rate. So that's a debug mode in beta flight that's going to capture our current RX frame refresh rate, our training time, so it uh, has to do with the RC smoothing, our average refresh rate, and then the sampling state, which is a computer uh, code thing again for the RC smoothing. So the big things we're going to be looking at are the current RX refresh rate and the average RX refresh rate. So this is essentially just the average one. This is the raw data coming in. And what we can see here, and I can overlay the black box so you can kind of see where I am in the flight. You know, when I was flying out, I turned on black box as we were approaching the highway here and did a little spin around, if you recall. And we can kind of see where that area is at and kind of can see some of the refresh rates from the transmitter that black box recorded. In general, the refresh rate is anywhere from 3.73 milliseconds. It's an average of 5.41 milliseconds in this area, the, the yellow line. And you can kind of play that forward and you can see that, uh, you know, it jumps around, goes up and down and, you know, what we're average is. So as we come out here and then rotate around, you can take a look down here too at our bit rate and that's your refresh rate. Now what we're kind of comparing that to is other refresh rates, other transmitters. So Spectrum has about 11 millisecond refresh rate. Crossfire and R9 around a 6.67 millisecond refresh rate. And you can see that DJI bounces anywhere from like a three millisecond refresh rate up to a six or even 10. It's honestly, it's within that range almost all the time from six to 10. And in this case, we're having about an average of a 5.41 millisecond refresh rate. So it's a pretty good refresh rate. If we move out farther in the flight, that refresh rate is, you know, we're, we're coming out to this blue building here. It's still the average 5.46 milliseconds. And then eventually that will jump up. You can see there's some spots here where it's jumping up to a 10 millisecond refresh rate, uh, just in a couple spots. And that's could be just, you know, packets uh, getting lost and it's the next packet coming in so it's skipping a packet and then it's capturing it again but you know we're pretty far out here we're almost a mile out at this point so that's pretty respectable to give you some sort of comparison tbs crossfire once you get it somewhat of a medium range 
it jumps up from a 6.6 .6 millisecond refresh rate, which is 150 hertz, it will jump all the way up to 20 millisecond refresh rate, which is 50 hertz. So it would be at 20 milliseconds locked all the time. You can see Spectrum is here, you know, bouncing anywhere from three up to 10 milliseconds. So it's, it's doing pretty well. And obviously this has an impact on your sticks because, you know, it's, if it's only updating the, the stick positions every, you know, whatever, five, 10, 20 milliseconds, whatever the refresh rate is, obviously that's gonna have a, a impact on the latency of, of feel. Now, is it that important when you're a mile out? Maybe not, but I just wanted to show some comparables and some data on what refresh rates and, and how uh, DJI is looking. Now as we skip and go way out, so now I'm on the other side of the hill and basically in that big field, actually we did our turnaround over here you can see we're still hitting those lower refresh rates to four milliseconds. We're an average now of 6.50 millisecond refresh rates, but there are some spots where it's jumping up again to 10 milliseconds. Uh, here you can see it's almost 10 milliseconds, 9.21 milliseconds. So, you know, anywhere from that three to 10 millisecond refresh rate is what you're really seeing with the DJI. Now I wanted to show this. This is an, another flight I actually did. You know, before, I did a video on a flight with DJI before. Then I did this flight that I'm about to show you, and then I just did the one that I, where I crashed because I went out too far. And this flight I kind of got chicken, and I didn't go far enough. So that on that third flight, that's why I went so far because I was just like, you know, I'm just going to keep going until it fails safe. And even then, I couldn't get it to fail safe. So um, and this one I went out and did some moves and came back. And one of the things I do notice with the DJI is it does have, even with those refresh rates jumping around a lot, it does have a nice smooth uh, set point for roll, pitch, and yaw. Whereas you don't see that in a lot of other transmitters, specifically uh, any of the FR Sky ones. And I'll show you FR Sky one here in, in a second. So if with the FR Sky and even Crossfire to an extent, you get some jumpy signals coming in, so your set point is really irregular, and then that messes with feed forward a lot. You can get feed forward spiking up, and it's and the core issue is the transmission of the commands from the radio. With the DJI, it is nice and smooth. You can see I'm out all the way on the other side of the school here. You know, I'm standing way back here, so I'm a mile and a half out. At this point and just doing a, a nice roll and you can see how smooth that set point is for the you know, sticks i can exaggerate that and you can kind of see that that is that is a nice and smooth compared to something like this now this is an r9 at close range and you can see kind of the the jumps in here with the refresh rate now this is a mile and a half out this one over here is at close range and you can see kind of the bumps in this and those humps and bumps that um, you know, I'm just doing the same kind of move where I'm just you know sharp roll move. How it's bumpier, you know, these larger humps like this right here specifically, where it comes up, kind of plateaus off, and then it shoots up again. And you don't really see those in the DJI. And again, this is this is far out. If I would be even closer, this one's a, a fairly close one. Now we do have a little one here, but in general, you know, I just am seeing a smoother uh, set point with the DJI than I am with the, you know, you know, the R9. Now this one here, this is a crossfire. Now th this is not the same debug mode. This is kind of the raw up here. So you can see the, the raw steps coming in. So if I bring this over, line this up, do a mark point, I should get around a six millisecond frame. Yeah, six millisecond frame there. And you can see that it's the six millisecond frames all the way through here. But if I move out farther in the flight, put this to zero, you can see here's a little bit farther out in flight. And this is actually a log from somebody at a racetrack. So it's not that far out. Where going around a gate at one point, this would jump up to the 20 millisecond frame rate. So if I come into here and measure this, obviously it's not updating the sticks, except for in this case, it was 40 milliseconds. So it must have been a dropped frame in there. Here it was 22, it's, that's 20 milliseconds. My mark point's not very good here. So these are all 20, here's another 40. This looks like, this looks like a 42 as well. So these 40s could be uh, just some drop frames or well here the sticks were moving pretty good. So that's not the open TX uh, smoothing things out. So 
you, you can kind of see those differentials. And obviously, you know, when you're updating the stick positions every three or six milliseconds, that's better than updating the stick positions every, you know, 20 or 40 milliseconds, uh, especially in a racing condition. So that's why TBS is now coming out with that crossfire locking. So they're locking it to the 6.6 .6 milliseconds. Well, with the DJI system too, keep in mind, you're mostly down around the three or four, maybe five. You're, you know, at short range, you're bouncing between the three to six millisecond frame rate up, update rates. And as you go farther out, yeah, you might be getting up to the 10 millisecond frame rates, but you're never seeing 20 or 40 millisecond frame rate updates. They're always less than that. So based on this, you know, what's some of the conclusions? So the uh, Crossfire system is a very good system, especially with the Crossfire shot. I haven't seen data on it yet, but I know Chris Thompson worked closely with them on getting that synchronization and getting, you know, you can lock it to the six milliseconds if you're not going really long range. And honestly, if you are going really long range, you know, 20 millisecond frames is probably fine. Uh, it's probably not an issue. You're not doing a lot of acro way out, way the heck out there or racing. But um, with DJI, I'm kind of just trying to demonstrate here that it's also a good system at short and far range. I would say the two best systems I've seen so far that are prevalent out there are the Crossfire and the DJI. And this is coming from an R9 user. I have an R9 for the FR Sky. I went from Spectrum to FR Sky, not knowing about all the frame rate issues that FR Sky has. And uh, so, yeah, now I have R9 on everything. So maybe FR Sky will get better in the future, but I'm really happy with the DJI. Okay, well, that is it. So my conclusion is, yeah, in that initial flight I did on the range test, I apologize, I must have ducked behind the mountain, but at least you got to see how GPS rescue mode worked and kicked in and brought the quad up and I was able to reconnect and how the DJI system worked with taking over control back from the GPS rescue mode. So that, that was the silver lining there, I guess. Some post I see on Facebook says it can go out to around 3.7 miles, 3.75 miles, around six kilometers and it drops off and then People were saying it does take a while for it to come back. I hope this video showed you something on the range you can get out of the DJI system. So it's definitely there and the refresh rates are very competitive like we talked about. Thanks again and I hope this helped.